What is up, guys? Welcome to the Bladed Wedge. It's August 5th, 2020. We're just guys who love watching golf, talking golf, and most importantly, playing golf. As you can notice today, Checo is not uh, here for the show. He's actually out of office all week, um, and we tried to schedule something yesterday, but the tropical storm hit New Jersey, which is where he's at. So we were unable because he didn't have power. So you're stuck with just me today. Um, I am back in New York City, like I mentioned in the past, uh, hanging out, working from home, and, and really enjoying it. Things are getting back to normal, so I'm excited about that. Headed down to see Checo in about 10 days now, uh, which was pretty exciting. We have some good things planned, and hopefully we'll be able to get a round or two in. With that being said, let's move on to the Blade of Wedge T-Sheet. Uh, before we get started, really just wanted to take a moment and uh, and and put our thoughts and prayers for Camilla Vajegas' daughter, uh, who, who recently tragically passed away w w with cancer. Uh, really, thoughts and prayers go out to, to him and his family as, as they go through a, a really tough time in their lives. So, uh, really thinking about them. First topic I wanted to talk about today was is just really thinking about the the COVID that the PGA Tour the plan the COVID plan the PGA Tour has put in place and, and really commem commemorating them. They've done a, a really good job versus uh, the MLB and, and versus some other sports. I think that it, it's tough because they have to travel around the country and go to different courses, but. The fact that we're still playing now and we've had limited issues with COVID really goes out to the, the commissioner and the staff who were putting together a, a solid plan and the players for following it. Uh, so super excited about that. Next, I wanted to jump to the uh, World Golf Championship, which happened last week. Uh, Brooks Kepka was the reigning champion, played well again. Uh, I'm not sure if you guys saw, he had a pretty funny moment around the ants at um, Bryson basically tried to get a drop on Thursday or I think about because there was an ant hill um, and trying to basically improve his positioning and, and lie so that he could not play off of it or, or have a better angle and then the next day Brooks was in the woods left and in a similar spot and came out and, and made a comment to his caddy that said like hey oh, there's ants I need a drop and then said just kidding and it was all caught on camera Long story short, pretty funny stuff. Um, you know, JT really showed out and played well. He is clearly the best player of the world and finally is ranked number one. The guy has an absolute total game from the driver to the wedges um, and actually pu uh, putted pretty poorly this week, but was able to overcome it mostly because of his wedge play and, and how phenomenal it was. Um, it was pretty interesting because he did – have Bones as his caddy this week. Usually he um, you know, he did not have his normal caddy because of some health issues. And it, it was funny because in the final round he played with Phil. As you guys know, Bones caddy for Phil for a long time. And so it was just interesting to watch them interact. And obviously a huge payday for Bones filling in and having Justin win the tournament. Um, I don't think there's too many hard feelings with Phil and Bones, but obviously they did separate at some point. So there is a little bit of uh, PGA Tour drama there. Moving on to the big storyline this week, we have the PGA Championship uh, this Thursday, August 6th through 9th, so tomorrow. It was originally scheduled for May 14th through the 17th, uh, and it's going to be at Harding Park in San Francisco with no fans. Uh, Brooks Koepka is the reigning uh, champion again. Um, and I, he's won it two times in a row, which is just awesome. You know, he's really dominated this event. Uh, it's like I mentioned, it's going to be at TBC Harding Park in San Francisco. One of the biggest topics of the week is the weather and the course conditions. The rough is super long, which you'd expect at the PGA Championship. But the kind of the weird thing is that it, the weather is in the 50s. There's a ton of fog and, and a lot of wind. Um, with it with the rough being long and the course with the rough being long and the course being long as well it's going to be a pretty tough challenge for the players this week I'm pretty excited to watch uh, and kind of see if you can come out of it I'm guessing it's gonna favor the the long hitter and specifically someone who can hit the long irons well especially into par fours 
You can watch it this week on CBS. I know they're carrying most of the coverage, especially the primetime stuff. So uh, keep tuning in there. Tiger is back is the number one storyline going into the week. He missed last week and hasn't played since mid-July at the Memorial. He is looking good, obviously having some really good uh, quotes in the press talking about how he can win. He's historically played very well on this golf course. And if you've been on social media, you've seen some of his big highlights and some of the most outrageous club twirls I've ever seen. Um, you forget how dominant he was in 2005 and how much confidence he had on the golf course. Um, it will be very interesting to watch him play since, you know, at the Memorial, he had a pretty up, up and down round. Um, but he did get Saturday and Sunday in at that tournament, which will definitely help him prepare. He's talked a lot about how his uh, practice and preparation have gotten more intense. And, and he said it's because his body just knows that there's going to be uh, that there is a major and he's getting ready for it so very excited to see how he um, performs brooks is also peaking um you know he really struggled at the start of the year with a knee injury and then obviously missing time on the pg tour with covid but he's really talked about that that he's been he wanted to peak this week and, and he really is he started to play better at the 3m and then last week at the WGC Championship, being in contention and really playing uh, very, very well and, and being in it till the 18th hole is exactly what he was, you know, obviously he'd love to win, but that's what he was looking to do is basically get himself in, in the exact spot to be peaking at for this tournament. Um, and he is. So I, I expect him to be in contention on Sunday. Uh, one of the biggest things he always mentions is that half the field and majors beat themselves beat mentally. And then the other half don't play well. So I think, you know, that's the kind of uh, mental strategy that he uses to get himself in a position that to think he can win every week. And honestly, I, I believe him. He's going to be there Sunday. This is a tournament that he's dominated over the last couple of years. And I, I, I don't see why this golf course would set up any differently uh, to make him not perform well. Uh, the last thing, uh, really talking about J Justin Thomas. This guy's been the best since the restart, the best pretty much all year. Uh, huge combination of driver, wedges, and also, uh, you know, when he can get the putter going hot. Pretty excited to watch him play. Golf course sets up well for him as, as well. It's really going to come down to if he can make the putts to keep him in contention and potentially win the golf tournament. Um, in terms of bets this week, uh, you know, the, the standard people are favored. So we have Brooks at 10 to 1, JT at 10 to 1 as the two favorites. Then we have John Rahm, Roy McElroy at 12 to 1, um, and Bryson at 14 to 1. So those are kind of the favorites. In terms of who I'm taking, definitely looking to, uh, definitely looking at guys like Shoffley uh, at 25 to 1, Matthew Fitzpatrick at 80 to 1. And Billy Horschel at 150 to one. When I'm looking at that, I'm looking at value of, of numbers as well as guys who have played well recently, um, and guys whose game set up for this golf course. Specifically, guys who drive the ball well and in the fairway, and guys who hit long irons well. And then recent putting stats. Um, usually, those are usually the most telling graphics. Uh, if you want to dig deep, into, dig deep, dig deeper into those types of graphics, check out Golf Bet by the Action Network. They have a ton of stats and and some super interesting articles and information about the course as well as the guys who are playing well. Um, the sharps this week are definitely fading Tiger. You know, I don't think that has anything to do with his play per se, even though he hasn't played well lately. I think it's more about the overvaluing of his numbers. So I know that there's a lot of people taking him in matchups, specifically against guys like Shoffley, Marikawa, and Cantley. Um, so check those out if you want to be on the sharp side. Um, if you, you know, obviously might have to end up rooting against Tiger. But I guess the good thing is if Tiger plays well and you lose your bets, at least you get Tiger in contention. So, um, you know, it's kind of a win-win situation there if you ask me. Um, Rotating topic this week, I was going to do, uh, you know, golf destination that you want to get to because Checo's actually taken mine. He is planning a trip for September to Pinehurst. 
So, uh, you know, I'm going to say that that's my number one golf destination I want to get to that I haven't played yet. Um, obviously, Riggs has been down, was down there for 90 days, so I got a really good look at it. And that link style is my favorite type of golf and, and where I tend to play the best. And, and the facility just seems um, out of this world. So I'm going to say that that's my answer for that question. And I'm guessing Chego would say the same because he just planned a trip to it. Um, you know, no interview this week. We are working to get Jeff Sherman back on before the U.S. Open to talk through uh, our bets uh, and talk through what he lo what he's looking at. Um, but I was able to consult with him on some of the picks I took, um, and he uh, was a little just busy this week with the U.S. Open and and his job. So uh, or with the PGA and his job, so he wasn't able to get on. But um, if you are looking to help. Uh, shoot us an email, bladedwedge at gmail.com. Make sure to follow us on Instagram and Twitch. Those are the best ways to keep up with what we're doing. You can also check us out on gulpwx.com. Um, and then a reminder of next week, you know, we'll probably be back Monday morning with a recap of the, P the PGA Champ, talking about all the storylines, talking about who won, Tiger's performance, those types, of, those types of things. So make sure you tune back in. And thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.